Welcome back to the channel everyone. As you can see by the thumbnail, I have bought a new bike. And before I get into the details of why I've actually chosen to buy a DRZ400, let me explain why I sold the Ducati. So, Originally, when I had the Scrambler, I absolutely loved it and it was super, super capable for what's considered to not really be an off-road bike. The reason why I actually sold that was because I started to run into dramas um, in terms of how heavy the bike was, I didn't have much clearance, like the faster you would ride it through some gnarly terrain. The suspension obviously really let it down. So. Um, without continuing to do that to the bike and ruining it, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna sell it, I'm gonna let someone else enjoy it for what it is, and I'm gonna get something that's a little bit more dedicated for what I wanna do. So, it's been nearly a year since I've sold the Ducati, and that's the reason why it's taken me so long to replace it, was because obviously I wanted to do a cool um, little bike build with the CB, which I've been having a lot of fun with, um, and then breaking my wrist has sort of pushed me back further from getting um, getting the bike that I wanted to replace the Ducati with anyway. So um, fast forward 12 months and now we're here and I've actually got the bike that I want to get to replace it. Um, I'm super chuffed with it. About a week ago, I put a post on Instagram um, asking people what would you choose and why out of the CRF 300L, the DR650, and the DRZ 400E. There was a lot of mixed answers, but I'll give you my reasons why I've chosen to go with the 400 over the other two. Uh, the 300 really appealed to me um, because it is a really cool lightweight adventure bike. It seemed to have enough power and wasn't too heavy for, for what I would like to do. But the one thing that kept turning me off about it, um, and it's a really nitpicky thing, but the one thing that kept turning me off about it was the fact that it didn't have, you know, 20 plus years of um, just proven history of being a really solid bike like both of the Suzuki's uh, do. So, not saying that anything would pop, go wrong with it, but you know, without having that track record, um, it was kind of a no-brainer to me after thinking about it a bit more to go with one of the Suzuki's. So that that narrowed it down to the two bikes for me. Um, previously, I've owned a WR450F and I absolutely love the power and the, the lightness of it. Riding the 400, it rode very similar to it. It wasn't quite as powerful and it is a little bit heavier, but it still felt a lot like it. Um, and the DRZ has a lot longer service intervals. So it was basically like I was getting another 450 or riding my 450 without the negative things that I didn't really like about it, which was the frequent servicing. So that was the reason why I chose the 400 over the 650. And to be honest, um, this is a little bit lighter than the 650 as well. So packing extra stuff on it, um, for when I'm doing some of those adventure trips, um, it's just gonna be that little bit lighter if I keep dropping it and have to pick it up and managing it through some of the more technical stuff. Um, with my skill level of off-road riding, um, this was the choice for me out of all of those three bikes anyway. So as far as this bike goes, um, it is a 2010 DRZ 400E. It's done a touch over 8,000 Ks and it's actually an ex-police bike. So I've got all of the servicing history for this bike and it's been over-serviced. They take, so the cop bikes, they take them um, and they get them serviced earlier rather than later. So um, it has a really good mechanical history. Um, it's really clean considering it's a, a 12 year old off-road bike. Um, it does have its fair share of just little scuff marks from boots and you know a few scratches on the plastics and stuff like that as to be expected you know being being taken off road and its age but all things considered um, I'm super super chuffed with the buyer that I've got. Now moving forward what am I going to do with this? Realistically I'd love to turn it into a lightweight adventure bike so you know, I will be looking at things of possibly putting a larger tank on it, getting a set of soft panniers for it, 
um, you know, maybe a, maybe a screen, a wind protector, um, and a few other bits and pieces. But I know that there's some viewers out there that have DRZs and have had them in the past. So any tips that you have, any parts and any must do's on this bike, let me know in the comments because I'm keen to hear, you know, I'm keen to shortcut some of those mistakes that, um, you know, first DRZ owners um, make. And I'd love to hear what are some good parts to put on this bike. Now, one of the first things that I've noticed about this bike is it, it kind of almost, the, the exhaust, it kind of almost reminds me of like the older XR400s, just the sheer sound of it. That is, a factory muffler on there, it's a factory exhaust, there's nothing aftermarket about it, but it is quite loud, like it's surprising how loud it is for a standard muffler. <laughs> Ducati when after I put the SC project on it. So it's just one of those things that I've noticed about the bike exhaust. Pretty, pretty loud standard. Well, everyone, if you've made it this far in the video, I really appreciate all the support. Everyone for subscribing and liking, it really helps out the channel. So as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.